Welcome to the Hockey Writers Prospect Corner, a show with our top prospects writing crew, bringing you the latest news, analysis, scouting reports, mocks, rankings, and much more. From the world juniors to the NHL draft floor, from the farm to the NHL, our team covers everything that happens in the world of prospects. So sit back, grab a notebook, and get ready for Prospect Corner. Prospect Corner. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Prospect Corner presented by the Hockey Writers. In today's episode, we're going to be doing our final first round mock draft, all 32 picks for the upcoming 2023 draft. I'm your host, Logan Horn, and today I'm joined once again by my co-hosts and fellow prospect analysts, Matthew Zator and Peter Barracchini. Once again, we are joined by our special guest, Mark Scheig, one of the writers on our Columbus Blue Jackets team uh, here at the Hockey Writers. Uh, how are you doing today, Mark? I'm doing well. Great to be able to join for another uh, unbelievable draft that's about to come up here. Yeah, absolutely. We're happy to have you back. Um, and for those of you who are looking at last week's episode and this week's episode and wondering why we're wearing the same clothes, it's <laughs> it's a coincidence. Happy coincidence. Exactly. It's, a, it's just Happy a coincidence. coincidence. Uh, it's Peter, how are, you, how are you doing today, Peter? <laughs> Doing good. Uh, uh, obviously, we've done a couple of these mocks uh, previously before with, uh, you know, 16 teams. But now that we're doing a full one, I'm I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's going to be fun to go through a whole one. This is just a fun category. None of us are NHL GMs. We're not making these picks <laughs> on draft day, but it's fun to speculate and talk about these guys. I'm looking forward to it, too. Matt, how are you doing today? Doing good. I love mock drafts. So uh, let's get this one going. It's, it's great. And speculating and Seeing if we get picks right, I don't know. Uh, only ones we'll probably get right are the top five, but you never know what that Oh, even there, there, who knows? We will see. <laughs> we'll get the first one right. <laughs> Prob- oh, well. That's a given. That's a given. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. That's right. Yeah, but it's, that's the, the real reason we're doing a mock draft is when we get a single one out of 32 correct, we're just going to clip that little bit and just <laughs> post it on Twitter and brag about it all day. Um, anyway, uh, we're going to get started here pretty quick just because there's a lot of players to go through. Um, I will say our draft order, um, most of it is decided at the time of recording. Um, but while we're recording, the Stanley Cup final has not ended. So we don't actually know the order. So picks 31 and 32 are organized by regular season points. Seems pretty likely that's also going to be the way it's organized when all is said and done. Um, that means Vegas has pick 32 and Montreal has Florida's pick at 31 in our mock draft. No guarantees. That's what actually happens. But just so you know, that's not a prediction. That's just based on regular season points. It'd be really funny if we got that completely wrong and like <laughs> thought it was accurate. Anyway, um, I'm going to get us kicked off here. I'm, I'm picking first for the Chicago Blackhawks. Not going to waste anyone's time. Connor Bedard, Peter, you're next. <laughs> not all going to be that fast. I promise. Um, Peter, you're next. We've talked about Bedard for like eight years. It feels like <laughs> Peter, you're picking second overall for the Anaheim Ducks. Who do you got? Yeah, I'm going to make this quick. It's Adam Fantilli. And just like Bedard, we've talked about him for about eight years or so. So <laughs> yeah, Adam Fantilli to the Anaheim Ducks. Yeah, absolutely. It feels like it starts <laughs> to open up a little after this. So don't don't feel any pressure, you guys, that yeah. you have to keep up <laughs> Peter's and my uh, little, little performance here. Um, but Record-breaking third, draft. That's right. It's the fastest draft in NHL history. It takes 20 minutes, all seven rounds. Uh, Mark, you're picking third here for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Who do you in have? Real life, yeah, in real life, it actually is very interesting because it'll be a decision between Leo Carlson and Will Smith. I know we talked on last week's episode that, that it's going to come down to the wire, I think. Mm-hmm. But geez, the, the size that Leo Carlson has, everything that he can do, what he did at the World Championship in front of the Blue Jackets and having the staff right there watching him, I can't pass Leo Carlson up. And mm-hmm. I really feel like that he could be number one in most years. Um, maybe not the generational talent that um, Bedard is, but certainly someone that projects as a number one center, six foot three, going to only get better um, over the course of time. Mm-hmm. Leo Carlson's the pick at three for the Blue Jackets for me. Feels like a great fit there, no doubt. Um, really starts to open up here, though. There's a couple options for all these picks, but Matt, you're picking fourth for the San Jose Sharks. They're kind of in no man's land right now, so you can go any direction and sell me on it. But who do you have them taking at four? Uh, San Jose Sharks are going to select Will Smith at four. 
I, you know, we've talked about him at length as well. Uh, a super skilled player. I, one of the, I mean, Sharks at this point, they need a lot of, a lot of prospects, a lot of, at any point. I mean, they could go Meech Cop here and be fine. Um, but I'm going with Will Smith. I think he's, he'll fit in with what they're doing rebuilding wise. Uh, they need a star, a star forward. And he's, and definitely Will Smith's going to end up being one of those guys uh, for the Sharks. So Will Smith at that fourth. Nice. Absolutely. It feels like that top four is kind of solidified in a lot of people's minds. Matvey Michkov on talent is certainly a part of that group, but there's so many questions surrounding him. Um, he could go second, third, fourth. He could go seventh, eighth, ninth. Who knows? We're going to, I guess we'll see where he goes in our mock draft here, but uh, I'm picking fifth for the Montreal Canadiens. Could they take that swing on Michkov? Maybe, but I have them taking David Reinbacher at fifth overall. Um, it has been 19 years since a defenseman didn't go in the top five back in 2003 was the last time there was no D in the top five. It looked for a long time like this year was going to break that streak. But I think I think Reinbacher is is a mature enough two way defenseman who could realistically play in the NHL next year on a, in a sheltered role, probably play um, in the AHL for a little bit. It feels like gives me real David Yearcheck vibes. I've talked about that all year. A um, little more defensively inclined than Yearcheck, but um, really great prospect, really great foundational piece for Montreal on the back end there. Uh, so sixth overall is the Arizona Coyotes. And Peter, you're making that pick. I always feel like I always get stuck with Arizona. I think it's because of the <laughs> fact that the Maple Leafs took uh, Shane Doan. Sorry, not stuck. Get uh, put with the Coyotes. Uh, <laughs> Karma now with uh, Shane Doan becoming a yeah. Maple Leaf. But on to the pick. Um, I am going to take from the national development team, Oliver Moore. Um, obviously, like, I, I honestly think that Moore has played, you know, um, you know, second fiddle to the top line on the U.S. development team program, but he can drive a line on his own. He's got the speed. He's got the creativity, the hands, the awareness, the competitive drive. And I think having that in the system behind Logan Cooley is going to be very, very fun because he could play kind of a similar game where he's very fast paced, but very driven and very skilled. Yeah, Logan Cooley and Oliver Moore say no more. I'm on, I'm on. <laughs> uh, Mark, you're up next here for the Philadelphia Flyers at seven. Well, it, I think it works out perfectly for them here because Cutter Godier is already at Boston College and sticking with the theme of the U.S. program. I think that they would take a real strong look at Ryan Leonard here. And I think that, that that's the pick that I'm going to make. Mm -hmm. they, Flyers need help everywhere. So mm -hmm. To be able to add him into that mix, speed and skill that he's got, I just think that that's that's a great place for Danny Breer to go um, with the seventh overall pick. That feels very much like a he feels yeah. like a Flyers player to me. Yeah, that's very really nice. does. <laughs> um, I also am curious. He doesn't have the size of Cutter Gauthier, but Gauthier was a winger in the the NTDP his draft year, and then the combine it came out that like yeah, uh, my college team is gonna play me as a center. I'm going to be developed as a center to come into the NHL. And then he shot up to fifth overall. <laughs> um, Ryan Leonard played center up until joining the development program. Um, he's shorter, but he has a very direct style of play. Uh, he skates well, competes really hard. There's a chance that he has a similar move. Obviously, on a team with Cutter Gauthier and Will Smith next year, it's going to be hard to find ice time down the middle. But it's a possibility. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, it's a good pick there for Philly. I like I like him there. For sure. Um, Matt, you've got a fun pick here. Eighth overall for the Washington Capitals. If this guy falls past the Capitals, I don't know what will happen. Matt Bamichkov, Washington Capitals are going to yep. choose this guy. Um, not obviously Ovechkin already on the team. Uh, they're not afraid of having Russians. Um, they drafted one last season, a guy that should have been drafted a lot higher. So Matt Michkov, a uh, pretty good choice for the Washington Capitals at this, this point. Could potentially take over for Ovechkin. Not saying he's going to be the goal scorer he is, but uh, he'll probably be a pretty good one. Uh, so uh, Michkov to the Capitals. Yeah, that feels, that's, looking at mock drafts, that almost feels inevitable at this point. But you never know. Maybe Washington wants to um, find someone that 
is going to help them sooner, help them while Ovechkin is there instead of take over after Ovechkin. <laughs> but it feels like Michkov's there. He's, he's theirs. Um, but maybe if he's off the board before they trade out of the first round, they they try to get a piece that can help them soon. Who knows? They're they're a little up in the air. But Michkov feels like just such a fun pick to project there. Um, take over the reins from Ovechkin. Maybe they have one year crossover in the NHL. That'd be just a great story, honestly. Uh, I love Michkov there at eight. Uh, I'm picking ninth for Detroit. Oh man, I wasn't even thinking that whole time. I don't know who I want. Um, I'm going to take someone that we talked about last week that you guys, anyone who listens to the show knows I'm a big fan of, uh, in Nate Danielson, uh, for Detroit. Uh, it's been like beaten to death for like three years now, how bad, uh, Detroit center depth is. They added Marco Casper last year, who has already kind of exceeded a lot of expectations for him. Um, and looks like a legit second line center, probably in his prime, uh, so add another guy that has real top six center potential in my eyes, not the most offensive potential necessarily, but but going to be a really great NHL player, really good pro, killing penalties, winning puck battles, transitioning the puck across the ice. Um, having Going from Dylan Larkin to Dylan Larkin, Marco Casper, and Nate Danielson in just over a year is pretty good in my eyes. <laughs> uh, that answers the center questions for the next eight years until Larkin's contract is is winding down. Um, so that's my pick for Detroit. Peter, you're coming in next here. Tenth overall for the St. Louis Blues. Ooh, I am <laughs> going to say Matthew Wood. Um, sorry, Matt. Uh, I know you're probably waiting on that, but um, I, <laughs> I, I just think that he has good upside, good energy, good shot. Obviously the skating still remains a factor, but you know, the fact that he's able to, you know, put himself in good spots, work give and goes very well and have that ability to just slightly break free from the competition. I think it's going to go well for St. Louis. Obviously they have Jake neighbor neighbors as, you know, someone on the left wing for the future, not a whole lot of substance after that, Um, you know, Sammy Blay, but he's more of, a you know bottom six kind of forward and i think wood would fit in very well on the left side um given the fact that he can put the puck in the neck very consistently nice that's a great pick matt wood has been all over the place all year it feels like but he's settling up pretty high towards the end which is fun to watch uh we've we've talked about how much we love him for for the last 12 months (laughs) um yeah next up mark we've got you picking for the vancouver canucks at 11 (laughs) <laughs> Oof, and that means that um, Matt's going to look at me hard here about which way I'm going to go with this pick. <laughs> Not sure. So they need center help. They, I also think they really need defense. So they could theoretically go Braden Yeager here. They could theoretically go um, Dvorsky here. Axel Sandin Pelk is there. Though. They really need somebody. <laughs> On that right side, so that, that that's the pick I'm going to go. Axel Sandy and Pelica for the Canucks. Do you approve? I endorse it. Yeah, <laughs> I You're approve safe. this message. Yeah, you can you can breathe <laughs> breathe easy now. <laughs> yeah, that feels it feels inevitable that they're going to fill their need at center or right defense. No matter who's on the board, they're going to take the next best of one of those two. And yeah, the that's a, that's a, the, the way it breaks. They have options. It, Sure. Yeah. With, as, with this few defensemen on, at the top available, if they can land one of the top ones, that that's a big victory for them. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Could be it could be a big day for them uh, trying to get out of the lottery pick section of the draft. But <laughs> uh, Matt, we're coming to you next here. Uh, the second pick by Arizona, twelfth overall. All right. Well, the Coyotes could go several places here. They went forward with uh, Peter's pick. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to go more. defense and uh, Tom Volander is going here uh, to the Arizona Coyotes, right? The two top defensemen off the board. He's arguably maybe has kind of pushed him his way up into the third. So uh, Coyotes need defense and Volander could potentially be a really good one for them. Uh, if Axel Sanding Pelico was available here, I would have picked him, him for the Coyotes at this point. So uh, Volander to the Coyotes. Yeah, that, that's a great pick. It feels like, Trading away Ekman, Larson, and Chikrin in a couple of years. Like Arizona needs something, a building block on D. So 
they got two early picks. Feels like a feels like a pretty safe bet there. They'll they'll take a D in one of those, a good chance. Um, 13th, I'm picking for the Buffalo Sabres. Truly thought one of those top three defensemen would be there for me because the right side of defense is a is a big spot for them, a uh, big spot of need because their left side is incredible. Um this is based on my like best player available list, not necessarily theirs, but it just feels like the gap is getting big enough that I can't avoid picking Dalibor Dvorsky here. Mm. They've got a couple of really great centers, Tage Thompson, Dylan Cousins, um, which maybe that actually works in Dvorsky, Dvorsky's favor. He has a little extra time to uh, come up to speed because skating like foot speed is going to be probably the biggest factor in his NHL success. So maybe, you know, not having a top six role in his first few years will be uh, a benefit to him. But I have Dvorsky there just because the talent gap is is getting too big and I can't justify anyone letting him slide any further because I think he's probably going earlier than that on draft day. But who knows? Uh, 14th is the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Peter, you are picking for the Pittsburgh Penguins. <laughs> Yeah, that wow, a lot of alliteration right there. <laughs> that was there. fun. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I didn't plan that. Um, that that was a very happy coincidence right there. I kind of like the fact that we're also wearing the same thing. Um, yeah, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a mystery. But um, <laughs> kind of like you with Dalibor Dvorsky being a best player available for Buffalo, I am going best player available right now, and I'm surprised that he's still on the board. And that's Zach Benson from the Winnipeg Ice. Um, the Pittsburgh Penguins, kind of like the Vancouver Canucks, they need about everything at this point. Um, <laughs> and getting someone in Zach Benson is a really good sign because of the fact that he has the best smarts on the ice, best motor, energy, the skill. Um, obviously, the skating mechanics aren't the best, but um, you know it's something that you can teach over time. And the fact that he has that competitive edge – Shows a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously five foot 10, 159 pounds, that strength is going to teams that may be wary of that, but the penguin should not because of how well he plays the game. Yeah. I love that pick. I, it feels like this is kind of the range where Benson will probably come into play Mm -hmm. talent wise. I really believe he's higher than this, but especially with NHL teams at this range, you're trying to project someone directly into a spot in your lineup. And someone of his height, who isn't an amazing skater, it's pretty tough to project into the NHL. Obviously, you look at the compete level and his skill with the puck um, and the way he anticipates play and acts like three steps ahead of his teammates, even teammates like Connor Geeky, who went early last year in the draft. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just hard to see him going super early. I'd be pretty surprised if he goes in the top 10. Um, so this feels like a, a, a natural spot for him to kind of come back up in conversation. I like that for Pittsburgh. Uh, 15th overall is the Nashville Predators. And Mark, you are picking for them. Who do you got? Oh, welcome to the Barry Trotz era. And right. the quote that <laughs> yeah. sticks out to me with this is, I can get you third and fourth line guys. Scouts, go get me a first round or go get me somebody with high upside. Yeah. Off of that. Oh, yeah. It's got to be Andrew Crystal. Mm-hmm. Good pick. You're, you're, you're talking yes. about... Hang, your two of your best friends are Kent Johnson and Connor Bedard, and you're playing <laughs> hockey with them, right? So forget the size for a minute. You're, you're talking about just upside, someone who can score, someone who can put up points. Mm-hmm. That's Andrew Cristal in a nutshell. And I, I know he's got some things he's got to work out. Everyone does at this point, but go mm-hmm. for the high upside play. I, Gabe Perot possibly could be in this conversation as well, but yeah. Cristal for me is the pick for the Reds. Mm. That's a great one. I, I love that quote as well. I think everyone in like the prospect sphere in hockey Twitter, or maybe just everyone on hockey Twitter that saw that Barry Trotz quote, where he's basically his whole draft philosophy is just like, do not get me the safe picks. Mm-hmm. Like your job is safe. Just take a big swing and get me the best player you possibly can. So it feels like they'll hopefully take that to heart. It'd be, be fun to see them kind of take some swings. And Crystal is a, is a great example there. Uh, last pick of this first half here, uh, is Matt, you're picking 16th for the Calgary flames. What do you, what do you see them doing here? Well, it's interesting now that Trey living's not there and Conroy's taken over as the GM, mm-hmm. but their scouting staff is pretty much the same, I think. Um, so, uh, they're still going to take 
most of what they've worked with through this year. And I see Colby Barlow being a big, um, he's still on the board. So very much, I, I, I don't know, pretty much a, a Flames type player. Uh, so Colby Barlow at 16th overall for me. Um, we've talked about him at length uh, being r- close to NHL ready or in, in his physicality or physical frame as well already. So mm-hmm. um, Barlow to the Flames. That's a great one. I, I can picture him playing with Kadri or Huberdeau in a couple of years. That's a, that's a fun pick for Calgary. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. We're just going to take a quick break here before finishing off the last half of the first round. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be right back after a quick word from the Hockey Raiders. Interested in writing for the Hockey Raiders? If you have experience writing about hockey, are passionate about the sport, and are looking to take your writing to the next level, the Hockey Raiders could be the place for you. Here at THW, you will have the opportunity to hone your craft at one of the world's largest and most respected hockey publishers. You will have control over what you write, be able to seek out media credentials, and be supported by a large network of writers and editors. Plus, you'll get paid for doing it. If you're interested and want to know more about team openings and requirements, please visit the Write for THW page on the Hockey Raiders website. A link to that page is also listed in the description all right so uh jumping back into the back half of the first round here i'm picking 17th for the detroit red wings the islanders pick that they got from vancouver um just that pick has been bouncing around for the last six months um but 17th overall after taking nate daniels in a center i'm gonna have detroit taking i think i've had him in a couple actual of my mock draft articles Gabe Perot here at 17th. Uh, it has been a very long time since Detroit has selected anyone out of the NTDP. Um, they've selected one player, uh, Red Savage, in the last five years, I think. And the last first rounder that they took was Dylan Larkin. So it's been a while, but I think Gabe Perot is just what Detroit needs um, in a big swing on a player that could that has the potential to be like a superstar one-way offense only winger basically um that is basically what they need in a nutshell is they need offense um and that's what pro figures to to give in my eyes i i like pro a lot i think this is a good spot for him uh peter you're up next 18th overall for the winnipeg jets yeah this is uh i I'm, I'm gonna go with Braden yeager on this one um you know yep two-way center that could do it all we even talked i even talked about last week how he talked about his developing game and becoming more of a playmaker but the fact that he could be a well-rounded versatile scoring threat um shows a lot and the fact that the winnipeg jets um are kind of in a conundrum right now with some of their top players mark shifley being one of them you need to get a top six center at this point. Now, whether or not he's going to be top line potential, we don't know. He could still be second line, but you need someone with some scory punch, the smarts and the awareness that he has. Um, I think that he would be a good fit uh, for the Jets because everything right now just seems a little bit murky. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good pick and a good uh, methodology behind it. It does feel like... Winnipeg is kind of in limbo right now. None of their players are leaving right now. None of them are expiring, mm-hmm. but it uh, doesn't seem like a lot of them want to stick around. Uh, yeah. Seeing that Pierre-Luc Dubois has like officially basically said that he's not looking at signing long-term there. When Same I saw that, I was like, wait, he didn't say that two years ago? I thought he already said that. Um, <laughs> that was already good. But, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but having that official and I believe, I can't remember who, an NHL insider was saying that Connor Hellebuck is in a similar place. Yeah not planning on sticking around long-term. So uh, yeah, it makes sense for them to kind of swing a little on upside and just kind of think about their future a bit there. So I like Braden Yeager at 18 there. Uh, Mark, you're up next with Chicago's second pick, 19th overall. For those who forgot, first overall, they took Bedard. (laughs) No way. (laughs) Just making sure everyone remembered that one. Everyone's on the same page with that, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. (laughs) Certainly several ways that the Blackhawks could go here. Obviously, when you land Bedard, I mean, now you're trying to build around him, right? So there's a lot of needs on the team. So you kind of start to look at the best available in this situation. Mm -hmm. And you you can make the case for Samuel Hanzik, a bigger player, or you can go with the smarts of an Edward Chalet. And I know Chalet was talked about quite a bit as a possible top 10 pick. 
for quite a period of time. Yeah. And I still think that there's enough people out there that believe that you know, with the smarts way he plays the game that he could get toward that. So the Blackhawks are going to take Edward Chalet to eventually help Connor Bedard. And that, that could be quite a lethal combo if mm. that's the way they go. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's a good one. He's he's definitely a bit of a wild card too. Kind of feels like a floater in the first round. Um, could go anywhere really. Um, yep. That makes sense there for Chicago. Swing a little on someone that could be a very good partner for for your your big centerpiece now. Yeah. Uh, next up, Peter, you're picking 22nd for the Philadelphia Flyers. The pick they got very recently from Columbus in the Ivan Provorov trade. Uh, who do you have Philadelphia taking 22nd? You, you just run over a list of who's already been taken at this point. I think sure, he yeah, jumped, I didn't you? I think he jumped a little bit. Yeah. But, oh, I skipped so many. Yeah, you guys are right. <laughs> yeah. No, I was about to say. I'm like, that's wait, my bad. Okay, it's not okay you guys. Yeah. That's all. Me. You make the rules around here so that those picks are just formally canceled. <laughs> say, those we can are, forget about avoid. We can forget void. about yeah. Seattle and Minnesota. We could jump to me. <laughs> I'm glad you guys are here. Or else this would have got real messy real quick. So actually, where we're at is 20th overall, as <laughs> everyone except for me knew. Um, Matt, you're picking 20th for the Seattle Kraken. <laughs> I was like, wait. I'm just blissfully doing. unaware here. And all the listeners, you three are all like, what is he doing? <laughs> um, anyway, 20th Ooh. overall. <laughs> no, no, no. It's starting again. Well, the uh, Seattle Kraken. 20. Uh, I think you have a pretty right. good player 20th overall um, at this point in the draft. They could go quite a few different areas. They got pretty good prospect pool already. And just being in there, going to their third year of existence. Um, they're going to go, I'm going to go with Samuel Hanzik here for, uh, the Seattle Kraken. Um, like Mark said, a bigger forward. Um, I think he'd really fit in with, uh, what the Kraken are building kind of that versatile type team that could, he could go up and down your lineup playing, um, very skilled, very good uh, with the Vancouver Giants this year. So, um, mm-hmm. going with Hanzik uh, for the Kraken at 20th overall. I love that pick. Picturing him next to Shane Wright or Matty Beneers is awesome. I, I love that combo a lot. Feels like kind of the profile of some of the guys they've taken as well. Um, yeah. uh, Yanni Neiman last year, a big European winger. Kind of similar profile to Hanzek, but not as good. Hanzek is amazing. Uh, big fan of that at 20. Um, and I'm picking 21st for the Minnesota Wild. Oh, boy. They're always difficult to uh <laughs> to gauge as well um i'm gonna go with someone who i think oh man i think he's better than this pick genuinely um but i think he might end up in this rough area dimitri simishev i have for minnesota here uh i am a huge simishev believer um excellent excellent skater six four he defends very well with his body and his stick and if his name was uh Damian Simpson instead of Dmitry Simishev and he played for the Brandon Wheat Kings this year he'd be like top 12 pick in my eyes I genuinely think his talent is at that level um I think it's just hard to get a read on him this year with the whole uh, Russian factor um but I love Simishev so I have him going 21st to Minnesota now we're on the 22nd <laughs> overall pick, Peter, with the Philadelphia Flyers. I think, right? Am I on the yeah. right pick this yeah, time, yeah, guys? Good. Okay, good. We're here on time. <laughs> Who do you have Philadelphia taking with their second first round of this year? I don't know. It seems it, it kind of feels like Quentin Mussey feels like a Philadelphia Flyer kind of player. Um, has that power forward game element to his repertoire. Obviously, he could use his body a little bit more in terms of being a little bit more aggressive, but he has the hands, he has the skill, he has the shot. And obviously, if Cutter Gauthier is going to be up the middle of the ice, you need someone who can, you know, play along his wing. And he has the, the, you know, the speed and the ability to keep up with him and make good plays and read off each other. Now, maybe a little bit counterintuitive. Um, his decision-making at times this year has been questionable but it has gotten progressively better during the season so Mm -hmm. i think maybe that because of his upside and the skill that he has and even at the combine too i think that teams uh you know are probably looking in on him because of that skill set and i think the flyers should take advantage of that 
Nice. That's a great one. Um, I, I, at first I was like, I don't know if he feels like a flyers type player, but the more you talked about it, I'm like, yeah, he feels like a flyers mm-hmm. player. Yeah. Um, Not that broad, I, like that broad street bully mentality, but you know, he's sure. competitive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Super competitive guy. I, I, I like that pick a lot. That's a fun one. Um, doing my best to stay on track at this point in time, mm-hmm. Mark, you're up next 23rd uh, picking for the New York Rangers. I believe this is, is this the Dallas pick? I think so. Believe so, yeah. That they so, got in the Niels Lundqvist trade. Yeah, and they could go a number of directions here, but at least looking at them, it seems like they really need a defensive prospect, someone that can step in, got some mobility, some NHL bloodline. So if you kind of look at all of that, somebody that's going to be really good, I think you guys know where I'm going when I say all that, but that would be Mr. Oliver Bonk. Hmm. <laughs> that's a good that's one a, that's a good one he he feels like a. he's not the most exciting prospect like you don't look at him and get real excited like you look at Simashev's skating and you're like wow his size and his skating you look at Sandy Pellick and you're like that offense is his brain is excellent um you look at Bonk and you're like he does everything well and nothing like exceptionally well he's gonna be a very solid NHL defenseman I feel pretty confident in that there's yeah. the highs aren't going to be too high with him and the lows aren't going to be too low. He's, he feels like he's going to be good for sure. So <laughs> I like him there. feels like, honestly, if you're the Rangers and you're trying to build out your depth and, and have young cost controlled pieces as you're trying to keep competing these few years, that feels like a great, you great choice. Like Someone that. you can count yeah. on. Yeah. Um, if that's kind of how they, the methodology they use here. Um, next up, Matt, you're picking 24th for the Nashville Predators. Well, uh, Predators are, they can go again, a few different areas and, uh, you know, high skill, high upside type guys. Um, I'm between two players here and, uh, either between Gavin Brindley and Otto Stenberg, and I'm going to go Brindley here because I think he's again, high skilled, but I mean, undersized, great, great motor, great type of, uh, I think, a very Barry Trotz type player. I, I think he, again, very versatile. He can play probably in your top six. He can also be good in your bottom six. Um, I really like Brindley for the Predators at uh, 24. Chris Stone and Brindley together. Whoa. Hello. Cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that would be a ton of fun. I agree with you, Matt. Like, uh, there's a lot of players that have top six potential and then people talk about them like, okay, they will be an okay third liner then if they don't make it, but not everyone's game actually works that way. Some players it's top six or bust. Um, but Brindley genuinely, he can play on any line in your lineup. I feel pretty confident about that too. He just works so hard, um, and checks really well and skates really well. So even though he doesn't have the size, he'll, he'll be good anywhere in the lineup that he, he fits for you. I agree with you there. Um, 25th is the Seattle, the Seattle, St. Louis Blues. Uh, and I'm making that pick. Man, this is another tough one. <laughs> they have a lot of picks in this draft, but unfortunately for them, two of them are really late. Um, there's not a lot of D kind of in this area for me personally in the draft. I'm going to go with probably the next best center uh, on the board in Callum Ritchie. Uh, looked really good at the U18s for Canada. Uh, had a bit of a strange year, but uh, you look at the tools, you look at like, I think he's roughly six foot two. He's a center. He skates pretty well. Uh, he's got great hands. Um, that feels like an NHL centerman to me. Um, feels like a pretty, pretty safe bet for that. Uh, it's just hoping that this year is kind of just confusing and it was a one-off. And injury that, derailed. I'll, let's talk about Richie. For sure. like, injury derailed him. He had a shoulder yeah. injury, battled through it most of the year. Very, very. Uh, the fact that he didn't test at the combine at all still means he's recovering from it. Yeah, he was he, walking around with the sling. I did see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's he's going to fall down some boards because of the concern, but he's still a really good player. If you look back at the tape from last year when he really broke out in Oshawa, this guy's a player. So if you're able to get him and in, in that range, that mm-hmm. you're doing really good work. Yeah, absolutely. He feels like he's. Up in the air, but I hope I hope he goes early enough. Um, who was I? Who was I thinking of? Um, oh my goodness! Can you guys help me remember a name? Uh, plays for the Blues, young prospect, was drafted by Vegas. 
um, traded in the Jack Eichel trade. Peyton Krebs, my goodness. Yeah, Krebs, yeah. Um, Krebs kind of had a somewhat similar situation. He was a really highly touted prospect, um, had some ligament damage in his leg in his draft year and slid a mm-hmm. lot further than a lot of people expected. Um, slightly different situation, but, you know, it happens mm-hmm. pretty consistently that that injuries in a draft year can change your your final spot just because teams are nervous about that kind of stuff because one in one injury the wrong way can derail a career um, and kind of change the outcome of a team in mm-hmm. some some situations uh so that's a great pick there okay 25 26 peter you're picking now for the san jose sharks who do you have they are going to take Otto Stenberg. And mm-hmm. obviously you're going to have that Swedish connection with uh, William Eklund. Both players are center and wing. So that you could interchange them, see where, where, uh, who has the best fit. Um, but I think that there's, there's going to be a lot of talk about Stenberg and his play at the SHL and, you know, inability to kind of produce, but then again, young player, he's not Leo Carlson putting up the ridiculous numbers that he has. But against his own age group, he is very dominant. And we saw that at the U18s. And, you know, he did, he's not going to wow you with, uh, I mean, he did wow us with his skill because it was on a little bit more on display. But usually he makes a smart plays. He's not as flashy at certain points, but he's very smart in where to get the puck and how to enter the zone very cleanly and effectively. So I think the fact that you have a smart player already in the system with William Eklund, I think you should you could probably do the same thing with Stenberg there. With Stenberg, that's great. I like that a lot. Um, there's a ton of teams up in this range that I can see him going to, and I'd prefer it to be the Sharks because thinking of a playoff team getting Stenberg on their roster in two, three years is a little mm-hmm. upsetting. Uh, but that's most <laughs> of the players in this range, genuinely. It's like every time I think about, like... I mean, they're not really in the playoff range, I guess, but thinking about the St. Louis Blues landing Richie, someone else late here mm-hmm. that they're going to get, and Matt Wood, I think we had going to them earlier. It's like, that's not even fair. You guys aren't allowed to be that good. What's going on? <laughs> um, I like that one a lot, though. So now we're at 27th overall. Yep, just double-checking this time. Um, <laughs> and that's you, Mark, picking for the Colorado Avalanche. Speaking of a team that will be upset, gets a good player. You know, right? You know, what happens when you're constantly good and add to a team? Um, that's the avalanche for you. And I know that there are mm-hmm. some questions about his overall defensive play. I mean, we're talking here about possible, you know, the best player available. I'm not sure if they would look at the Russian situation. That's always going to be the big wild card like we've talked about. But you know, if you're looking to try to add to the blue line a little bit, I know McCarr's back there, but you, you can never have enough depth. And a guy like Lucas Dragosev definitely sticks out to me at this point. A little bit of question about the defensive play overall, but really, really good player. If he's able to put everything together, I think he has the chance to outperform where he could go. I know some services kind of have him outside of the first round, but I certainly believe in the mobility that he's got. So that's the pick for the avalanche. That's what I like about that in this draft is that when you started there, I honestly didn't know which prospect you were going to. If it was <laughs> Dragasevich or Gulyayev, uh, yeah. just like the offense for sure for Dragasevich and Gulyayev. And then the defense is the question mark. Dragasevich, I mean, it's hard to ignore the points. Mm-hmm. And, and even though I have questions about his defense and I am not a huge fan of his skating, I think that is where his biggest issues come from defensively. I, I don't ignore the offense when I take that into account because he's mm. he's excellent. And you look at those numbers he put up in the WHL this year. It's ridiculous. Um, so I, I hope he can can put that together a little bit, get take a get an extra step to his stride. Um, and uh it would be like a solid two-way guy, but he's got the offense yep. for sure. And uh I mean if you're on a team with like Makar, Gerard. Taves. It's like someone's got to be able to teach you something about skating. <laughs> like someone's going to be able to help you. I'm I'm sure of it. Uh, I love that pick for Colorado there, Mark. Um, Matt, you're up next, picking 28th for the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> oh, no my pressure. Gosh. No pressure. Get him, Peter. <laughs> um, <Ooh>. there's, <laughs> there's a few players that they could go with here, actually. Um, I have two I, in mind, but I want to hear what you have we'll to say see first. We'll see if I pick one of them. I, I'm going with Charlie Stromel uh, for the Maple Leafs at this point. 
I really like him as a, again, I've said he could potentially be a ceiling as a third line center, but I think he has a lot more upside like that. And now after the combine, a little more impressed by him. So I'm going to go with uh, Stromel. I think he'll be really good for the Maple Leafs down the road. Uh, Peter, who are your two? I'm just curious. <laughs> I was actually thinking either Riley Height or Ethan Goche because now that oh, Brad, I had Brad Goche Trelle Trelle okay. is here, he's gone to the Western Hockey League quite a bit. So True. I was, I was Fair. and he's got a competitive edge there. And he, he's and, not, he's not allowed at the draft though. Yeah, I know yeah. that's why. But hopefully they can, <laughs> you know, get him on the phone petty. at certain points. But even like I even talking to Ethan Goche, I become a huge fan of his. So I had, so I had I, him as my I, other one. I do, I do like Shramble, though. I do think that there's some untapped potential there. Yeah, right. it feels like his his offense isn't going to be at the low level it was this year at, at uh, in college. It was just like really rough for him for a lot of the season. But uh, he feels like a really just heavy hitting, big, pretty good skater, uh, like bottom six center probably. Maybe he's got more if the offense really hits. But I mean, if you're Toronto and you can get a a good third line center who's really physical like I feel like half of Maple Leafs fans that's the exact (laughs) person they they dream of every playoffs so who knows maybe he's enough to uh to settle those people down a little bit I wonder if he has like the kind of upside not necessarily upside but has kind of a season where like Matthew Nyes where he kind of flies under the radar a bit but then he has a breakout and that's when he starts to you know get a little bit more comfortable at, at, at one point yeah, I mean, if the offense really clicks next year, then I think that that boom of attention could mm-hmm. definitely show up. I think some people were talking about him in like the top 10 range like a year ago and we're looking ahead. Yeah. Um, but the offense wasn't really there. So that's really the only differentiating factor at this point. Um, you kind of have to show you can score in the NCAA before anyone's going to give you a chance in the N- NHL at that point. Um, yeah. I like Strammel there. Uh, I'm picking 29th now for the St. Louis Blues again. I got them again. Um, (laughs) They took Richie and Wood so far, so I'm going to have them go for a defenseman. I'm going to go Tanner Molendyke. Um, I've been all over the place on him this year, but just watching him skate, uh, I I can't justify letting him him slip much further because he genuinely has – I would say him and Tom Volander for me are very close among defensemen skaters. Um, I think a lot of people agree that Oliver Moore is just cut above um, in this whole draft class skating wise, but Molendyke is excellent. And um, I think that is going to determine his potential. He didn't show a ton of offense in junior this year. Um, Well, he did, but it didn't show up on the stat sheet a ton. Uh, but he was good defensively. His skating always gives him a shot on defense. He can always get back, basically. Uh, his edge work is phenomenal. And uh, I think I think St. Louis can afford to use one of these picks on a defender, um, even though they have like four or five defensemen locked up for like 20 years or however long they sign those guys to their contracts, like six or seven, actually. But it feels like forever. So Molendyke, I have going 29 to St. Louis. Peter, your last pick of our mock draft here. This is a fun one because they're always a fun team to watch on draft day. 30th overall, you're picking for the Carolina Hurricanes. They selected Jackson Blake in 2021 who played for the Chicago Steel. And they are going to take Jaden Perron from the Chicago Steel, 30th overall. Um, You know the Carolina Hurricanes and high upside players. Smaller players, but the skill set is just undeniable. And the way that Perron, you know, is very crafty with his movement, his edge work, his playmaking abilities, it screams like a Carolina Hurricanes pick. And I, I think that this is the perfect spot for him. Um, obviously, a lot of people are going to have him ranked lower because of that size, but the upside screams first round talent. Yeah, that's a that's a great pick. It feels like a like a Hurricanes type bet. Like if Brindley was still on the board, uh, which could happen on draft day, it feels mm-hmm. like he's someone they could kind of try going after. Maybe uh, like a Seth Jarvis light doesn't skate as well yeah. as Seth Jarvis, but Jaden Perron is a is a great prospect in his own right. Um, the height is just the the real issue there, um, but I I really hope he makes it. That'd be a, that'd be a really great story. He's a really fun player to watch this year. Uh, Mark, you're, you've got your last pick of our mock draft here at 31 for the Montreal Canadiens with the, uh, the Florida Panthers pick here. 
Yeah, and so they went offense earlier, so you know. Uh, we had them take Reinbacher. Oh, yeah, to take Reinbacher. Yeah, that's, that's right. Thank yeah. you for that. See, now you're keeping me in line. So we're, we're good. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I'm so back to even. Go. We are back it's to like... even. So th- at this point in the draft, you take the best available player. And you know, the, at least the fans in the media in Montreal love to get their guys that are kind of local that play in the queue. So this screams Ethan Gauthier to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fun one. That That's a fan favorite. Before yep. he plays any games for them, but then especially once he plays games for mm-hmm. them, yeah, he, he screams like that, like piss you off energy that like <laughs> yeah. could shock. Oh, he'd fit in the Bell yeah. Center perfectly, with Although, him. yeah, <laughs> which makes you a fan favorite immediately. Like Ryan Kessler a decade ago was that guy that you just hated to play against, <laughs> but fans of that team, Matt, did you love Ryan Kessler when he's on the Canucks? Oh, he's my favorite, one of my favorite players. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Exactly. <laughs> so you think Oche just got that personality. He's got that 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 bite to him. So that, that's a fun pick for Montreal. Uh, last pick of our mock draft here, pick 32, the Vegas Golden Knights. Matt, you are picking. So who do you have as the last player on day one of the draft? This guy's dropped quite a bit, and that is Riley Height. And uh, he, Height, he's not, he's not <laughs> he has not go high. Um from the Prince George Cougars. And uh, this is a pretty good, if the Vegas Golden Knights can get height at 32 or 32nd overall, oh my gosh, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good guy to get. And, um, you know, they've had, they haven't had really a top line center. Well, they got Jack, Jack Eichel now, but uh, now they need some guys to kind of take over down the line. And I'm not saying height can become a top line center, but I think he could be a top six. Um, if he does, continue playing center in the NHL. So height for uh, the biggest golden Knights for the last pick of this uh, first round. Nice. That's a great one. A uh, good way to finish it off there. I am mm-hmm. actually curious uh, if any of you have any guys that, uh, that you would say are the, the best guys left, the best of the rest um, guys that, that we didn't pick that you kind of wish, because when you do like a group mock draft like this, you don't get to do your own thing. You get to do one <laughs> quarter of your own thing. <laughs> like personally, like Daniil Boot is someone that I really wanted to take. And I truly believe is a first rounder this year. Um, but the picks didn't land there. And the, the teams that I had, I really didn't think would go for him in the ranges that they had. So Daniil Boot is someone that I think is very much in play in the first round, um, as well as David Edstrom, someone that has risen a lot lately. And I, I genuinely think he's, he's going to, be very close to the first round, if not in it. Um, Peter, do you have anyone that that you feel like is probably going to get into that range or someone that you would take very soon after this, if you could? Um, I'm so a big fan of Cohen Zemer. Uh, really can shoot the puck and find the back of the net. He had, I believe had, he had 41 goals this past season. So yeah, the offensive production is right there. And I still think someone's going to take a shot at Casper Halton and um, with that blend of a power forward like game, the speed, the energy, the physicality, he's he can be a menace on the ice. And I think someone is going to be probably taking that very early on in the second round. Yeah, absolutely. He feels like a, a guy that could definitely rise based on his size and some <laughs> of the fitness testing stuff as well. Um, Mark, do you have anyone that that you would be looking at right after this this group that we picked here in the first round? Yeah, someone that I actually talked to at the combine that has got some size, and anytime that you score 41 goals in, you know, on your team, you, you probably deserve a little bit of attention. I don't think is getting much attention or should get more. Cohen Zimmer, though, mm-hmm. um, out in the WHL. Yeah. Somebody they think is very mm-hmm. going to get some steam, I think, moving forward. It was actually a very impressive interview when I talked to him at the mm-hmm. combine. Yeah. yeah, he's been an interesting player to watch. It's pretty wild that he feels like he's fallen this far. Um, and it really comes down to the skating mostly at this point. He's got what I like to call a Logan Horn skating stride. Um, that's a joke, though. He's infinitely better than I could ever be at skating. But but he's it's not it's not at the level of his peers, really, at this point. He's got a wicked shot. So if you think you can develop that, which a lot of teams will think they can, and many of them probably can. Um, he could be a top six winger scoring goals, like kind of in a Colby Barlow type role, mm-hmm. like yep. he could be at that same level. Um, 
It's just the certainty of him getting to that level is lower than with a guy like Barlow. Um, uh, Matt, what about you? Are the, is there anyone you're, you're looking at here that you would take pretty quick after our first round here? Grayson Sachin. And uh, I had him, I was kind of thinking around the range where the Maple Leafs were as well, but I'm thinking maybe that's a little, um, but Sachin's, you know, ranked anywhere. I mean, he is ranked somewhere, but, you know, late first round and definitely early second. So uh, he's one I'm looking at. And then of course, after the, the, the combine is uh, Moran uh, could potentially be sure. really soon here at the early yeah. second round, late first, maybe. Um, so yeah, I, those are the two guys I'm kind of looking at right now. Absolutely. Uh, a couple of other names I just want to throw out real quick. Mikhail Gulyayev, big fan mm-hmm. of him. I think he could go in the first round for sure, but Russian factor, undersized defenseman, who knows? Um, and then genuinely one of my very favorite players in this draft, Oscar Fisker Molgard. <laughs> um, I think he could be in the first round just as someone who is a very safe pick. Um, I've mentioned it before. I'll say it again. Reminds me a lot of Marco Casper last year in his draft year, um, coming from a not as traditional European hockey country to Sweden as a teenager, um, succeeding in the SHL as a 17 year old. Both of them did that. Both of them were seen as like, you know, good defensive centers, probably no offense. Casper's shown a lot. I don't think Fisker Molgard has that offense to him, but it means something when you're a second line center on a decent SHL team as a 17 year old, that means something. Um, and teams are going to be chomping at the bit to take him. I'd, I'd be very interested to see where he goes on draft day. Big fan of big fan of him. Um, all right. Well, that does it for us this week. We made it through all 32 picks. We survived. I only got booed once, I think, um, <laughs> which is pretty good as the commissioner. I think that's a record. Gary Bettman wishes he had my uh, my boo ratio. Um, well, yeah, so that does it for us this week. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Prospect Corner. Make sure you subscribe to the Hockey Writers YouTube channel to make sure you catch all our new episodes. And also make sure you check out our site, thehockeywriters.com, for tons of draft coverage in the days and weeks leading up to it and following the NHL draft, which is very soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thank you, Peter and Matt, as always. And thank you, Mark, for stopping by again. Uh, Somehow we all wore the same clothes again as last week. Pretty (laughs) wild uh, set of events. Who knows how that happened? But uh, Thanks for thanks for coming by. We really appreciate your input here. Um, and thank you all for watching this week's episode of Prospect Corner. We'll see you all next time.